this is the second experiment, resistive networks. So uh, first, let's start with the resistors. So resistors are passive devices. They do not amplify the signal in any way. Uh, the ones that we will be using in class right now are carbon resistors. They are cheap, reliable. But the tolerance is, uh, it ranges from 5 to 20%. If you need higher precision, higher accuracy, then you might want to use different kind of resistors. So uh, for now, uh, we're going to use uh, carbon resistors in this lab. So there is a scheme called color coding. The bands on the resistors, uh, on the ceramic coat, on this on this ceramic coated resistor, it has a uh, it has different bands which has different meaning. Uh, the first band represents the first significant figure. So in some resistors you will find three, and in some resistors you will find four bands. In case of let's say you have four bands, so the first will represent the first first band will represent the first significant figure. The second will represent the second significant digit. If it's only three bands, then uh, there is only one significant digit. Now, in, uh, in this case, the third band will represent the number of zeros. Uh, let's say we have a resistor, uh, we, we have a 10K resistor. So the first band will be brown, the second band will be black. third band will be orange and the fourth band it depends on what is the tolerance the fourth band here represents the tolerance so it can be silver gold depending upon what you have and so this will represent 10k now now moving on to the power so power equals to v squared by r v you can also uh, it can be also written as i squared now why power is important because if you uh, resistors have different power ratings and if you have a different power rating let's say uh, in place of a one one watt resistor you, you have like a half watt resistor so this will this will get burned okay so you, you need to have the right wattage you need to select right wattage resistor now uh, in this in this particular lab we have uh, about seven tasks and uh, this, this I think is the circuit diagram for the to start with, which has a DC power source, and this is a resistance network. We will be, uh, th there are different tasks. I think the first one, starting with, will be uh, measuring the voltage across, measuring the uh, resistance of these uh, resistors and analyzing, uh, checking their values, seeing how they differ. And the second would be calculating, uh, measuring the voltage across these resistors. and. Uh, the other tasks that, uh, that are is uh, measuring the current across all the resistors and, uh, and yeah, using LCR meter to measure the resistance and, and a couple of other steps. Uh, for the first part, um, we need resistors. And here, as you can see, I have a couple of resistors, 10K, 1K. These all are quarter watt resistors. The easiest way to identify what is the power rating is to look at the size. The higher, it's, it's, it's a general trend, like the higher the uh, wattage, the bigger the resistor is. Now, uh, to start with, if, if you just want to verify, let's say this says uh, it is a 10K resistor. Now, if you want to verify, I have this uh, digital multimeter here. It's connected to the ohm meter setting. Now, uh, it's, it's already in the ohm, uh, it's already in the uh, ohm range. If you want, if if you want, you can just hit the press the button. Now, to measure this, I'm going to connect one of the terminals to the negative and one of the terminals to the positive edge. Well, uh, so since resistors are passive, uh, non-polar, so it doesn't really matter how they are connected. But uh, anyways, so as soon as I plugged in, I, you can see uh, it shows about 9.8 kilo ohm rating, and um, we assumed it was. Uh, like uh, it was mentioned that it was 10k but, so, but there is a little bit of difference and this is where tolerance comes into play so tolerance can be anywhere from 5 to 20 percent so this this difference is very normal now now moving to the second part uh, for second part you will have to use a breadboard now to start with breadboard uh, these are the terminals now these terminals if you if you move them uh, if you turn this up uh, you can see that there is a hole uh, here and uh, if, you, if the, the wire should should go through this hole 
it, it will make a good connection if it passes through the hole instead of just wrapping around it that's not a very good idea all right so I have one wire in place uh, I'm gonna use another wire for the uh, Uh, it's it's very important to have good connections. The connection, the wire should not be loose, otherwise it could it gets harder to uh, to figure out later in the circuit when you have a little bit. So it's it's always a good idea to have everything nice and tight. Right. Now to start with, this is this is a breadboard. Now if if I turn this around, you can see that there are no connections, right? So these are not connected to anywhere. So these need to be connected with these wires. Now if you can if you look around the edges, this edge, there is a plus sign. Okay, so I usually the, these it's I usually use them as a power bus. Now, to uh, one thing that should be taken care of is this uh, this column, this column, which has four sections, which has in total eight sections. Uh, not all the sections are connected together. The first four are connected together, and the last four are connected together. If you want to have want to have this entire bus as as the power uh, as the positive. Uh, with the positive uh, polarity then you need to uh, connect a wire from one to another now same goods uh, these this positive and negative they are not connected together but this section like this first four parts they are connected together and the lower four parts they are connected together now moving on to the this this part this these five pins they are all connected together but these rows are not connected to each other now now uh, in this circuit we, we obviously need uh, a DC power supply and uh, we, we will have this resistance network. Now to start with first, uh, first I'm going to make these power buses. I'm going to uh, use this one as my positive for the positive supply and use the other guy for the negative. Sometimes it might be a little bit hard to get these in so it's always you can use a plier to first straighten the leads and now it should just go right in okay now once i have this this ready uh, i'm gonna now build the network of resistors first if, if you first we need to analyze what the circuit what the circuit is so i can we can clearly see that this is in parallel these two resistors are connected in parallel this entire part is in series with R3 and this complete part is in parallel with these two resistors. Now I will start with R1. Now R1 is 4.7K so here I have this 4.7K kilo ohm resistor. I'm going to straighten the leads a little and so this is connected to the positive supply. Now either you can uh, put one of these like insert one of these legs in this positive side or you can you can have this somewhere here and then connect it but just to save time I'm gonna connect this directly to here so now okay now uh, one end of the 4.7k resistor is now connected to the positive terminal and the other goes over here now if at this junction I can see that there are two resistance resistors connected in parallel so starting with R2, R2 is 3.5 kilo ohms, and it, it's one end is connected to R1, and the other end goes to ground. So I'm going to pick a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. It's one end should be connected should go here, and the other end goes is supposed to go to ground. Now, I think the length we don't have enough length, so I'm going to just connect it somewhere here. And I'm gonna later connect this to ground. Okay. Now, if I look into this figure, the, at this particular junction, there is another resistor, which is a 10K, so that will be R3. And uh, here we have this 10K resistor. So from this same junction, another resistor comes out. And let me just put this. I like to use pliers, it makes the job easier and uh, it doesn't unnecessarily bend the legs. 
and we don't want the legs to be to come in contact they should all stand apart now once I have this have this done so far um, now I'm gonna connect another resistor R4 which is 1k so I'm gonna pick up this 1k resistor uh, if you if you see then this in this 10k resistor there is an orange band in this 1k resistor there is a red band so now I need to connect this to a 10k uh, to a 1k resistor which is again connected to the ground so I'm going to use the same here now in order to make our job easier what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the common ground so I will instead of uh, I will insert this leg over here so I don't have to use multiple grounds now why so as I told earlier these five pins they are connected together and uh, I don't want to use too many wires to connect multiple grounds so I'm gonna have this all all the grounds connected in this particular row this same row and I will connect them to the to the ground eventually right. now moving on to the last resistor which is a 10 kilo ohm resistor and which is R5 so it has the same same uh, it starts from the same terminal and it goes eventually to the ground so no, it, it, it's, it has gotten a little bit crowded over here so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make some arrangements some changes here um, I'm gonna put one end over here and uh, this this can go there also just make sure the legs don't touch each other uh, it can be done more neatly and nicely but uh, since we don't have too much time so I'm gonna just go with the with the simple arrangement now I all I need is to connect one wire here connect this to ground or uh, which or, or I can just simply use this Particular this wire and insert it here. So now, now we have connected. We have this circuit built connect built over here. Now I'm gonna uh, connect it to the ohm meter and see what the what the entire resistance for looks like for this entire network. So this is the uh, this thing. I should move this here. So here uh, I connected the negative terminal and here goes the positive. Now since the circuit is properly connected, everything is nicely neatly connected. So this, when this is done, you can see a resistance of about 7.1 kilo ohms, which is correct. Now once this part is completed, now what needs to be done is use, uh, we have to use this digital multimeter to digital emitter to measure and record the current going through every single resistor. Now, uh, one thing that should be uh, kept in mind is an emitter is always connected in series, whereas a voltmeter is always connected in parallel. So let's say uh, I have this supply, and I want to measure the resistance flowing through this uh, current flowing through this uh, resistor. So I replace an emitter in series. Now, uh, in order to measure the voltage drop across this across the same resistor, I will have a voltmeter connected in parallel. Now, moving back to the uh, fourth part, so I'm going to show uh, cover the first part, give you an idea how this thing should be done, and uh, rest can be done in a similar way. So now, uh, in this in this part, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this emitter in series. With one of these resistors so now let's let's just start with uh, first resistance R1 so for this for this uh, I'm gonna have to so now uh, we will need to take this off I'm gonna use this I'm gonna use these two terminals to connect it to a DC supply of 10 volts and uh, this is I, I'm going to turn this on later. Now I'm going to make, have to make some changes to the circuit. So I need to insert 
the multimeter m meter in series for that um, i'm going to use this uh, alligator clips okay i have these alligator clips on now i need to make some changes minor changes here that would include uh, instead of this r1 directly connecting to these two now i will have now the circuit would look like this here we have r1 here we have m meter and then this goes to other resistors r3 and r2 now to do that i'm going to take the pull this leg off from here okay once i have that off then out i'm going to insert this to the in the next row okay now i'm going to use the alligator clips Now the positive part, since it's connected in series, so the positive of the M meter, uh, the positive of the M meter will go and it should be connected to the other terminal of this resistor. Now as far as the negative part, and also I need to make some changes uh, in connections over here. So I'm going to take this out and connect it uh, to the current part. Terminal. Now, I'm going to insert uh, another. I'm going to connect another wire, black wire. Uh, okay. And this will now be connected to the part to the row where initially the first register was connected. Okay. The the legs of these registers they shouldn't touch each other. Now, once the circuit is completed, and uh, I'm going to now set the voltage to 10 volts. And as you can see, when I, when I start increasing the voltage, you know, more and more current flows in. And you can see clearly see an increase in the total current. In the current. So I'm going to set this to 10 volts. All right. So, so at 10 volts, we can see there's 1.4 milliampere of current is flowing through the circuit it's it's getting into the circuit okay now similarly uh, you can find calculate the res current flowing through the all the other resistors now we need to we, uh, we want to measure the voltage drop across these resistors so uh, i have made a couple of changes again yeah. now as i told earlier uh, the volt voltmeter should be connected in panel so for, for resistance r1 i have this is the wire coming from the multimeter, from the voltmeter. This is the positive terminal, and this is the negative terminal. So, the negative terminal is connected directly to the uh, to the other terminal of the resistor, and the positive terminal is connected to the um, first terminal of this resistor. So, it's connected in parallel. And as as you can see, when I increase this voltage, you can see there is a change. Now, the thing that needs to be observed is there is a difference. So this, this difference is because of the voltage uh, drop. Now, okay, uh, now for the fifth part, we need to remove, um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is uh, remove a couple of resistors, resistor R3 and R5 from the circuit and uh, record voltages. So this can be done in the way I explained the earlier circuits. Now, okay, now we will work on the seventh part. So for the seventh part, it says collect 10 resistors. Now it can be any value. Uh, what I mean any value is it can be 10 10K resistors or 10 4.7K resistors, whatever you are comfortable with. So you have to measure the value of these resistors using an LCR meter. This here is an LCR meter. Uh, this switch here is used to uh, select whether you are measuring an inductor or capacitor or resistor. So we have, uh, so here it says R, that means we are measuring resistance. And I have this 4.7 kilo ohm resistor connected. Now, this, even though this is 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, it measures 4.6. This is because of the tolerance. Now, to make, now looking at this color band, at this band, on this bands on this resistor, I can, we can determine what is the tolerance. Now, if you look here closely, you can see a golden band. This golden band represents 5% tolerance. So 
for say, uh, we we have a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. So the value can be anywhere from 4.7 k kilo ohm plus 5 percent plus minus 5 percent of 4.7 k kilo. Ohm. Okay. So you have to do this for 10 resistors and measure the value. Now, once you are done with that, for the eighth part, you, out of these 10 resistors, use the one use the resistor which recorded the lowest value, this R1 min, and use the another resistor for which you got the maximum reading, R1 max, and build up a circuit, connect them, uh, connect them to the DC power supply, 10 volts. Now you can you have to measure and record the voltages across the two resistors. This can be done uh, in the similar way as I explained earlier, uh, the other things earlier. And uh, please record the polarities. Uh, 